Flour is everywhere. It's in bread, noodles, cakes, cookies, pancakes, dumplings, and countless foods we eat without thinking twice. It sits quietly on kitchen shelves, sold in plain bags, rarely questioned. But if you stop and ask, what exactly is flour? The answer is far more interesting than ground grain. Flour is one of humanity's oldest technologies, a product of agriculture, physics, biology, and culture, all blended into a fine powder. It helped humans settle down, build civilizations, and eventually invent comfort food. Today, we're going to slow down and really look into what exactly is flour, where it comes from, how it's made, what's actually inside it, why there are so many types, and why this simple powder behaves so differently depending on how you use it. Let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. At its simplest, flour is a food powder made by grinding plant material. Most commonly, that plant is wheat, but flour can also come from rice, corn, cassava, oats, almonds, chickpeas, and many others. The idea is straightforward. Take something solid and break it down into particles small enough to mix easily with liquids and form doughs or batters. But flour isn't just crushed grain, it's structured. In wheat flour especially, those tiny particles contain specific components that give flour its unique behavior when mixed with water. This is why flour doesn't just dissolve like sugar, it transforms. It stretches, traps air, thickens liquids, and turns into something completely new. In other words, flour is not just an ingredient, it's a building material. Flour didn't start in factories. It started with stones. Thousands of years ago, early humans discovered that if they crushed grains between rocks, the resulting powder was easier to cook and digest. Archaeological evidence suggests people were making primitive flour over 30,000 years ago, long before farming as we know it existed. Once agriculture took hold, flour became central to survival. Grains could be dried, stored, and milled months later. Flour meant food security. It allowed bread making, which meant portable calories, shared meals, and social rituals. Entire civilizations, from Mesopotamia to ancient Egypt, were built around grain harvests and flour production. So when you scoop flour into a bowl today, you're handling one of humanity's oldest inventions. Modern flour production still follows the same basic idea, just with much better tools. It begins in the field, where grains like wheat are grown and harvested. Once collected, the grains are cleaned to remove dirt, stones, and damaged kernels. Next comes milling. This is where the grain is broken apart. A wheat kernel has three main parts, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. Traditional stone milling crushes the entire grain at once. Modern roller milling, however, carefully separates these components before recombining them in controlled ways. White flour usually comes mostly from the endosperm, which is rich in starch and protein. Whole wheat flour keeps all three parts together, resulting in a darker color and stronger flavor. The way flour is milled directly affects its texture, nutrition, and how it behaves in recipes. Flour may look simple, but it's chemically complex. The largest component is starch. Starch makes up most of the flour's weight and is responsible for thickening sauces and forming structure when heated. When starch absorbs water and heat, it swells and gelatinizes, giving bread its crumb and soups their body. Then there's protein, most famously gluten-forming proteins in wheat flour. When flour meets water and is mixed or kneaded, 
These proteins link together to form gluten, a stretchy network that traps gas bubbles. This is what allows bread dough to rise and hold its shape. Flour also contains small amounts of fats, minerals, enzymes, and fiber. Whole grain flours retain more of these components, while refined flours focus on consistency and shelf life. Not all flour is meant to do the same job. All-purpose flour is designed to be versatile, balancing protein and starch for everyday cooking. Bread flour has higher protein, making it ideal for chewy loaves. Cake flour has lower protein and a finer grind, producing soft, delicate crumbs. Then there are flours made from other plants. Rice flour creates light textures, but lacks elasticity. Corn flour adds sweetness and color. Almond flour brings fat and moisture, but no gluten structure. Each type exists because different foods need different structural behaviors. Flour isn't one thing. It's a category of tools. Flour isn't just food, it's tradition. Almost every culture has a flour-based staple. Bread, noodles, tortillas, flatbreads, dumplings, pastries, these foods are tied to rituals, celebrations, and identity. The way flour is used often reflects climate, available crops, and historical trade routes. Even language reflects flour's importance. Words like companion come from sharing bread. In many societies, breaking bread together symbolizes trust and community. Flour helps shape not only diets, but social structures. Today's flour is often standardized. Protein levels are measured, moisture is controlled, and some flours are enriched with vitamins and minerals lost during refining. This ensures that a recipe behaves the same way whether you're baking at home or producing thousands of loaves in a factory. So what exactly is flour? It's ground plants, yes, but it's also history, chemistry, culture, and craftsmanship. It's the quiet foundation beneath some of humanity's most important foods. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.